from entertainment, we're moving on to, um, of course, our environment mm -hmm. uh, segment. Uh, good morning to Matthias Galba, the Green Man. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hey, good morning. Hello, hello. <laughs> and we also morning. have Dr. Arif Anwar, the Managing Director and the mm -hmm. founder of Sengenix. Sengenix, yes. Sengenix, yes. yes. But before that, you, did you sleep last night from the game? Uh, very little. <laughs> uh, I had a pre-sleep of one and a half hours and uh -huh. then between coming here and uh, Germany win, uh -huh. I had another one hour. So uh, limited but I feel fresh. Mm. Energized, you know, it's always good news when Germany wins, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> no. all right, no. all right. And speaking no, of energized, can hear Dr. Arif is saying no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Horrible so, nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's an England fan, you know, so, ah, but after explains. having, yeah, after having lived 10 years in England, I'm a little bit of an England fan as well. <laughs> okay. Hopefully, we meet in the final, right? Wow, well, well, fingers crossed, Germany will win. Fingers crossed, fingers all crossed. All right, so uh, things are not looking so good right now here, especially in Klang Valley, three areas we've mentioned just now with the haze and everything. Um, or how, how, how would you suggest we go through this? I mean, essentially the haze uh, is largely down to human activity. Uh -huh. uh, these particles that we have in the atmosphere that are taking the sunlight away, and that are causing us respiratory problems, yep. largely derive from peat forest fires. Mm -hmm. Peats are actually the world's most effective carbon sink. They absorb all of the leaves and the trees that normally would decompose again. Yep. We have photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, a tree turns the carbon dioxide mm -hmm. into oxygen. Mm -hmm. Malaysia is the world's number two in peat. Indonesia, the world's number one peat of, of forests. And uh, I started some tree planting three years ago in Raja Musa peat forest that mm -hmm. burned down five years ago, a thousand hectares. Mm -hmm. So sometimes some of the haze comes from Malaysia as well, yeah. even though in this case, uh, nearly all of it, it comes from Indonesia. Yeah. There is a small fire, I think, uh, next to Banting, yeah. but I, I read it was already under control, mm -hmm. and that is a peat. The problem with peat is, it's like a couple of meters of organic matter that Mother Nature has absorbed. Mm -hmm. When humans move in with agricultural activity, small-scale stuff, drain the area, usually they make a drainage canal, yeah. then the peat gets dry. When that starts burning, it's very difficult to stop yep. it. And okay. that's where you have to fix smoke because the uh, fire is under the soil, yep. mm -hmm. under the soil. So it's a very tricky one to get rid of. And when we did the tree planting there in Raja Musa Peat Forest, I asked the Selangor Forest Department, hey, should we make noise about it? And they said, actually, yes, we need to raise the awareness as well in Malaysia that we need to be very careful, you know, don't have fires in peat. Mm -hmm. and I always say to people, leave peat alone, mm -hmm. because that's when peat is at its best. When you have a high water table, you never get a fire. Mm -hmm. So that's the best way of preserving, and it absorbs so much carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. In 97, when we had the worst haze, yeah. more than 3 billion tons of carbon dioxide was released by those fires. Wow. That's more than the European Union has in CO2 emissions. In total, all the European countries together. Sounds painful. Mm. Yeah. All right. Okay. So moving on to more um, optimistic um, topics, uh, we're yes. going to be asking about Dr. Arif about Sengenix. Um, um, has it been operating for quite a while now in Malaysia? Uh, we've been operating since 2008. Mm -hmm. So we were actually, uh, I think, Asia's first genetic diagnostics company. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, four years. What do you normally okay. more, more, more focus on? Uh, right now we're primarily focused on human diseases and diagnosing using genetics, using biotechnology. Okay. But yeah, you know, talking to Matthias, very excited about how we can apply it towards environmental issues. How, how can we apply it? Can you just give us a, a few examples? Well, I mean, I think the first thing I want to say is that, um, you know, really there's been a huge revolution in terms of what we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I compare it to, for example, the cost of doing yeah biotechnology or genomics mm -hmm. as it's known. Uh, if we think back 10 years ago, I mean, I don't know, how much would a computer cost 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. 2,000 ringgit, 3,000 ringgit? Plus, sometimes four. Right? Mm -hmm. um, if we look at the cost of doing genomics compared to 10 years ago to now, it would be like buying a computer for two ringgit. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. The cost has come down a thousand fold, mm -hmm. which means there's amazing, remarkable things we can do. We can apply it towards Med medical research, but also you can apply it to in, in big environmental issues and problems. Um, 2000, so relatively, it's still relatively new. Uh, what about what about it, uh, the support that you get 
you have enough um, skill, uh, manpower to actually execute what you have planned for yes. the company? Well, I think, I mean, I'm to, 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 to talk about it on a global level, there's lots of very, very exciting things being done right now in terms of how to address environmental issues, environmental concerns and problems with biotechnology, mm -hmm. right, coming together. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the most, one of the biggest things, and I think that's, that's the big difference when you look at, I'm sure Matthias has talked about this in previous weeks and months, but you know, if you think about waste issues a hundred years ago, it was a local problem. Yes. You know, if you lived on a hill and you were rich, you threw your waste outside your window and forget about it. Yeah, you just move on, <laughs> right? Unfortunately. <Yeah. laughs> Whereas now, it's a global problem. When you throw your waste away, everybody gets affected because mm -hmm. the scale of it is so huge. Yeah. If you look at the big environmental problems that we've got, we've got waste as an issue, yeah. we've got pollution as an issue, we've got water contamination, mm -hmm. we've got uh, energy and fuel, yeah. but we've got the wrong ones. Mm -hmm. We're not re using renewable resources. Yep. So I think those are some of the areas, if, if I think about the big environmental challenge, mm -hmm. we definitely need the help of biotechnology, mm -hmm. of microorganisms, of uh, finding the solutions that, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, bio is essentially mother nature. Yes, yes there is uh, mm. occasionally some interference with mother mm -hmm. nature, mm -hmm. with uh, which the green NGOs are sometimes not so keen on, mm -hmm. but where are the opportunities where we can have a very nice combination? And mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. biofuel is one example. I feel like one. Exactly, yeah. I mean, that's, that's uh, a very, very exciting area because, you know, as Matthias mm -hmm. is saying, when we, you know, most of the f energy we use, most of the fuel we use is fossil fuels. So it's yeah. coal, it's oil, it's gas, and all of these mm -hmm. things produce carbon dioxide and more, even more waste. Mm -hmm. It's going to run um, out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's, one day it'll run out. Yes. One day it'll run yes. out. But even if it doesn't, you know, it's, it's, they're saying now oil and gas, another 200 years, 300 years. Yes, yes. Now, that's... Maybe only 50. Well, well, the the, 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 the the thing is, mm. can the planet take yeah. two more centuries, three yes. more centuries yeah. of burning oil and gas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely mm -hmm. not, no way. Mm. Okay. So um, one really, really exciting solution is using biotechnology mm. for generating energy, mm. for making biodiesel. Mm. Now, algae, right? I mean, you mentioned algae. Yeah. Algae is a very exciting mm -hmm. possibility. Yep. Um, it's very, very efficient. The amount of biodiesel algae can make is 50 times more than conventional plants oh, okay. Okay. right huge huge quantities you can turn there's a company called Aurora in the US mm -hmm. which is doing great work you can turn the entire Sahara into a massive field flood it with water seawater and glow algae on it um, and you know it's it's enough even a small amount an area the size of Singapore if you covered all of that with algae mm -hmm. is enough to power the whole of Asia okay. right um, let's break it down. Okay, that is basically about about um, alternative source of energy. How about waste management and, mm. and biotechnology? What are the future um, uh, technology that we can look forward to? Well, there's stuff already happening now. Mm -hmm. And one thing which I really like, which is a very cool thing, is bio. It's called bioremediation. Mm -hmm. Basically, it means using bacteria or fungus to get rid of waste. Okay. So imagine a scenario, you, you know, you could have a polluted bit of land that's had a plant on it which is contaminated with diesel or toxins. How do you get rid of it? There's two ways of getting rid of it. One way is the non-green way, mm -hmm. the expensive way, which mm -hmm. is you use chemicals and flood it and you actually you create even more problems by yeah. doing that. Okay. The other way, and scientists around the world have already done this, this is not science fiction, mm -hmm. you can have natural, natural fungus, natural fungi that actually eats. You know, Oh, yeah, they break yes. it down. Okay. They, they eat it. They break it down and convert it into very nice things like water. And, you know, so the byproducts are very safe um, and it's, it's converted for free right? without for using. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They eat the stuff. Um, there's even a bacteria um, which actually is able to break down uh, things that are byproducts from radioactivity okay. like mercury and some of these things. It breaks it down. It literally eats it and converts it. So, you know, how cool is that? You can use something yeah. which is a natural mm. living thing to break down and eat up toxins. It doesn't sound like it costs a lot of money. Well. Exactly, right. It doesn't and, cost and a lot of money. And how is the response like? What are the plans to execute this on a full-scale basis here in Malaysia? Well, there, I mean, I think there are some very interesting applications for Malaysia. Mm. One example is you can use the same fungi that eat up toxins to break down wood pulp. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Malaysia, you know, Sabah, Sarawak, there's a very big wood forestry industry, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And right now, you have to use chemicals to break it down mm -hmm. to get to paper. Yeah. There are people working in Sarawak who are very, very good at um, um, scientists who are working on fungi that can break down, pa uh, you know, wood pulp into paper mm -hmm. using fungus. Mm -hmm. Right, no more chemicals, mm -hmm. and that has advantage. Right, it makes you actually it's cheaper. It makes Malaysia more competitive, mm -hmm. but also it's uber green. You use the German word, <laughs> over green, very green. <laughs> Hopefully, it's sustainably planted uh, forest rather yep. than mm -hmm. virgin forest. And <laughs> okay. I think another focus in Malaysia is the whole palm fiber waste. Mm -hmm. yep. I think there are over 20 billion of that material out there. Yep. How can we turn it into a higher value product mm -hmm. that has medicinal value that has. Uh, other uh, high-end applications where mm -hmm. you can actually fe fetch a bigger margin, mm -hmm. margin from a commercial perspective. Mm -hmm. yep. The other thing is in Pahang, they are planning a big algae valley. Okay. It was even featured in the uh, in the International Herald Tribune okay. as Malaysia potentially becoming a leader with big investments in algae technology. Mm -hmm. I think there's a local company, Algae Tech, that has done some advanced stuff. Mm -hmm. So Malaysia is actually in parts of these area at the forefront i mean we have a biotech corporation in malaysia with a mandate to push those technologies and to even potentially in the future with malaysian money with international money bring biotechnology to malaysia i guess that was as well one reason why syngenics came to malaysia because the government is in in line with 2020 vision yep. trying to bring green tech and biotech to malaysia as the future hub for uh, um, high value economies and the more we can make them work together the better for the planet yeah and the nice thing is actually it's good it's good for business also mm -hmm. uh, it makes production of things more efficient you know faster cheaper enables Malaysia to be more competitive it looks good on paper the, they, they have this really awesome concept uh, what about the challenges what kind of support do you need in order to make this work yes it be it from 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 uh, of course um, uh, the people itself from uh, the government uh, I, I like it when Zalia was asking about the cost. You say that it doesn't cost a lot, especially about, you know... It's um, lower. It's lower. It's lower in cost. Everything has a cost, but it's lower. <laughs> but how about on a grand scale? Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, can, can, do you think it's... Can the government support um, financially the cost of using all this um, biotechnology in um, supporting the green cost? Yeah, I mean, initially there has to be support. Because, you know, going back to algae, the reason why we can't buy it right now when you go to Petronas is because it still costs, it's still being developed. Mm -hmm. It actually costs, right now, it costs more in terms of energy to mm -hmm. produce the biodiesel than it actually makes. Yeah. But you're right, you absolutely hit it on the nail. Getting it to the big scale is where things start to make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the Malaysian government, you know, uh, Biotech Corp, you know, I think the policies are already there. Uh, it needs people to drive it, it needs innovators to really get it going on a grand yeah. scale. What about maintenance-wise? Maintenance-wise? Um, would it be... Uh, how, how simple it is? See, it's a living thing, right? You don't need to maintain <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. It's, yeah. You don't, there's no machinery, there's no... I mean, if, you, if you're trying to make uh, uh, biodiesel from algae, it's a pond full of algae that ah. grows. Okay. There you go. There's but nothing, there's no... You, that, you can't find mm. faults in this. <laughs> I'm trying to find I, faults in this. I, I think, you know, you need to look at the specific detail. Yeah. I mean, bioremediation with bacteria that eat up the waste versus algae. And there are many different algae technologies. Yeah. Uh, they all have their challenges. They all have their potential technical hiccups mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's expensive. That's, if right it was now very, expensive. very easy, uh, you know, then it would be uh, uh, very cheap. So, but you need to look at the specific application mm -hmm. of biotechnology mm -hmm. because yep. biotechnology is such a huge variation. Mm -hmm. Like green technology, you have renewable energy, you have green buildings, yeah. you have alternative fuels, mm -hmm. you know, you have solar. Th there are so many variants of it. You need to focus in specifically on one issue and then ask the question, how can we best support this to make it uh, a very effective industry mm -hmm. that uh, is present in Malaysia that creates high value jobs in line with 2020 and at the same time becomes an export opportunity 
for Malaysian expertise and technology to be exported to neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. That is, I think, the intention of the government. Yeah. And for that to happen, we need uh, innovation at Malaysian universities that goes beyond what maybe we see so far and commercialization of that mm -hmm. and the right environment for entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to get support to, to get capital to invest in those technologies that currently might not yet make a lot of money, but they'll be the technologies of Absolutely. the future. Yeah. And you know, one thing which, which you know, a lot of Malaysians don't think about is Malaysia has the perfect, absolutely perfect weather yeah. for all of this stuff, right? You know, you ask a biologist, what is the perfect temperature to grow stuff at? Humid. Right? 37 yeah. degrees. Yeah. What is the yeah. temperature in Malaysia every day? Yeah. 37 degrees. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, sunlight, there's usually yeah. loads of it, right? Yeah. Well, with, well, with the haze, but apart from the haze, <laughs> there's, there's usually loads of sunlight. Um, so, and water, it comes out of the sky. You know, if there was no water, it wouldn't work very well. Yeah. So, absolutely perfect. It's the place to do it. So, um, none of the European countries are actually It's tough, right? You tried growing algae at, in London. Mm. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> so, um, okay, we talk about waste. There's no pollution. sunlight. How about pollutions? You know, air pollutions, mm. water pollutions. What are the, 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 how does biotechnology can help with, with, with that? I think, um, yeah. water, I think water pollution is uh, uh, not that difficult because you can actually apply the microorganisms mm -hmm. and there is this EM uh, technology that has been used, you know, I've been at green events where we've been throwing mud balls. Mm -hmm. I mean, that often only does a temporary job, mm -hmm. but uh, those microorganisms, they are actually able to eat up some of the uh, waste material and create a more balanced environment in the uh, uh, a waterway. But mm -hmm. you need to have a integrated strategy for that. Mm -hmm. So projects have already been happening in Malaysia where mm -hmm. some of that uh, uh, biotech application has helped to clean up local rivers. Mm -hmm. Apparently, you know, to clean up the Malacca River before the boats could go on, mm -hmm. I think it cost 800 million ringgit and the budgets Ow. for cleaning up the Klang River, but you cannot just use everything biotech. You need to uh, avoid the pollution sources in the yes. first place. Yeah. Those yes. factories yes. that dump in any, yeah. any toxic liquid mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. people who throw in the waste. You need to stop that and then at the same time clean up the water yeah. with the biotechnology. So to have it work in combination. So instead yeah. of working on cosmetics, you should go back to the root problem and stop the whole thing then from yes. All right, uh, oh, before we... Do both, yeah. Before yeah. we let you go, uh, maybe... Upcoming activities. Upcoming tree planting. activities. Your tree tree planting. planting. Next uh, Sunday, the 24th, uh, okay. again in Shah Alam. Mm. And uh, there's going to be loads of opportunity for people who want to go green to plant uh, trees again. Right and there remember on the screen. Mm -hmm. Two weeks ago,